What is going on guys? My name is Powerbank. Welcome back to the PUBG Mobile official channel for some new update sneak peek action. We are going to be looking at the new QBU-88 in this episode, which is one of the new guns. It is a designated marksman rifle, which is a DMR, similar to the SKS, the SLR, the Mini. Uh, really, really, really fun gun to play with. I'm going to break it all down in this episode. Uh, stay tuned. So let's first take a look at the QBU-88. This is the gun right here in all of its splendor. You can see it more or less looks like a sniper rifle, but it's got that bipod on the front. That is the distinguishing characteristic of this particular weapon. Now the bipod is actually functional. So if you go prone, you see how it kind of lays down and you can uh, put that down on the ground. This will actually increase your stability and your accuracy with this weapon system and it can uh, really reach out out and touch people with very little recoil from range. We'll examine that more in just a moment. So first, let's take a look at the QBU and the available equipment slots on it. And you got the scope as always. Uh, it's not like a Winchester 94 where there is no scope that you can attach on a sniper rifle. Uh, but this one does take any uh, scope and any magnification. So all the way up through eight times is good to go on this rifle. It does take a muzzle as well. It will take a suppressor. It will take a flash hider. It will take a compensator. We'll test both of these uh, today as well. And then it also is the traditional magazine slot. This weapon comes with 10 rounds uh, for the default magazine, but if you put in the extended, it will go up to 20 round magazines. Now we've put our compensator on the weapon. Let's go ahead and test the audio for the QBU. And as you can see, compensator is on and just like that. It's kind of a muffled, muted sound. It's really not... Uh you know, it's not super loud. It's not like the SLR, which is crazy loud. Now that we've talked about the compensator and the sound that that makes, let's talk about the suppressor and how quiet this gun actually is. Check this out. QBU-88 from range is very, very, very quiet. I'm talking, you can hardly hear this thing. I mean, I'm talking incredibly quiet. So this is going to be an assassin's weapon of choice uh, for certain. The QBU-88, very, very quiet. Quite the contrary from the SLR. Now let's take a look at the bullet drop for the QBU-88. We're going to reach out to a few different targets at range, and we're going to determine how much you have to compensate for bullet drop over distance with this new marksman rifle. So first and foremost, we have a six-time scope on here. Let's go ahead and take a look at 100 meters, and we'll put it right dead center. And of course, it hits right where you send it. Um, really no surprise there. At 150, dead center as well. Reaching out to 200. And... Dead center as well, 250. So hard to aim accurately now because of the chunky. So 250, dead center. It might have dropped uh, just a slight bit there. Here's dead center on, my, on the aim. And it hit dead center. Really no drop at all. I mean, we're talking, I mean, millimeters at that range. And then we're going to put it right dead center on... 300 as well. It's right at the top of the white right now. We fire and look at that bull's eye. I mean, we're talking almost no compensation uh, for bullet drop. Here's the lower part of the target and it hits just below the white right there. Um, again, I mean, wow, dude. Crazy accuracy for the QBU. Bullet drop, really, you don't have to be concerned. Let's back up a little bit more even. So 326 meters is about the maximum I can test here reliably. You, you ba it's a laser beam, folks. It's a laser beam. Now I want to take a look at the cadence of shots that uh, can be effective with the QBU. Um, guns like the Mini, you can fire really, really rapidly and put a really nice tight grouping of shots down range. Let's take a look at the QBU with both attachments here, the compensator and the suppressor, and see how tight these groups can get, how fast you can shoot, basically how much firepower can you put out with this marksman rifle. So looking at 100 meters, we're going to first use the six times scope with the compensator, and we'll see exactly how, uh, how effective this thing is. So we'll center up our, our aim. Aim. 
pretty good, honestly. And as you can see, as you start to go faster, it does have a little kick, a little rise to it. The unfortunate thing about this gun is there is no grip attachment to, like, really kind of cater or uh, tailor that particular experience of the, of the muzzle rise when you fire shots. You can't really customize that with the grip, like a light grip or, a, or an angled or a vertical, like whatever you prefer. You've got to rely on the compensator to help you out with that for you. And again, it comes down to the actual cadence of your shots. So again, you get used to that rhythm. And as you can see with the rhythm, there is a lot of shots in the same exact area. It's really, really accurate with the compensator on the QBU. Let's go ahead and check out with the suppressor and see if we can get similar results here. It's not as accurate there, but it's definitely controllable. I want to go out to 200 right now. It's pretty good at that range, too. I mean, that's a lot of shots. Maybe they're not all headshots, but, man, aim center mass and just kind of get that rhythm down. Not shabby at all. Let's go ahead, throw on the compensator, and see at 200 how that six times can uh, handle. Wow, compensator really, really, really sharp at that range. Uh, lots of accurate shots. I mean, you don't really miss a whole lot with this gun, and especially firing at that cadence, you seem to miss low. Uh, when you when you misjudge the cadence, it misses low, which is still going to be like a gut shot instead of flying over the, the head of the enemy. Now, it doesn't seem to bounce side to side too hard, which is really good news because without a grip to control some of that, you can see the, the, the jump is pretty much all vertical. Very excited about this weapon. Let's go ahead and test the actual jump of the muzzle at 100 meters with each of the different attachments. All right, here we go. We're going to tap once right now with a compensator attached. And you can see the reset position of that particular uh, shot is just above the black. We'll go ahead and do it again. Really consistent, again, up and to the right, just above the black. Overall, really impressed. It tends to come back almost to the position that you left it, uh, which really makes it easy to recover your shots. Uh, by dragging slightly down. And that is super important when you're trying to control recoil at range by tapping on a DMR. We've tested the compensator. Let's see how much higher the suppressor goes and if the compensator is required. Wow, interesting. Little higher on that one. Yeah, you can tell the suppressor does go a little bit taller, but it's just pretty... I mean, honestly, two of the lowest shots we've had as far as like the, the comeback on that recoil have been with the suppressor. Look at that. Interesting. So it's not, I don't think the compensator is going to be absolutely required. I really don't. It does jump a little bit higher on uh, the higher end, but it actually had multiple shots right now that came back lower like this one. This is uh, really interesting stuff. I feel like the move is going to be putting a suppressor on this weapon. Now, we've looked at the compensator, we've looked at the suppressor. What about with no attachments at all on the muzzle? That would be the only thing that you could add that would help accuracy or recoil control in any way. And let's see exactly how this uh, is controlled here. That jumped pretty high, all the way to the roof. Again to the roof. That was fairly low. Wow, not bad at all. Let's go ahead and take a look at the QBU at some various distances now with no muzzle attached to see what the controllability of the recoil is like. Seems like there's a little more side-to-side -side recoil without a compensator attached. We'll go ahead and fire another round.
But again, it's really not bad. I mean, look at that. It's it's not bad at all without the comp on it. Where does the compensator come into play? I mean, let's go out to distance here at 200. It's a little less accurate at 200 uh, without that compensator on it. So. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like definitely the comp is going to help for sure, but it's not as significant. It's not like an AK, uh, AKM where you have to have the compensator on there to be accurate at all. Um, this thing is really not too shabby um, with really any attachment on it. I'm not noticing a huge difference with the suppressor, etc. Um, so let's throw the compensator back on it. Let's look at a three times scope here and let's go in a little bit closer at like 60 meters. Pretty uh, scary stuff right there, actually. I mean, look at the amount of headshots there. That's, that's interesting. I gotta say, I really like the way the suppressor feels. I think that's the move uh, with this particular gun. Let's test uh, another scope here. Let's go with the 4X and see how that looks. And while I'm marveling at the actual uh, quality of this weapon, why don't we consider that we are still uh, standing up? This thing is a whole other beast when you're prone. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So, so far we've only examined the QBU while standing up in a standing position. Now we're gonna take a look at this thing prone because it's a whole different beast. The recoil is minimal while using the bipod on the front of this beast. So check this out, six times. You know, I could I could definitely fire at the same cadence, but I mean That's a, a lot of firepower. I mean, look at the target, dude. It's all just like tap 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 all over the head. And that's with the suppressor attached. Why don't we try a compensator right now at range here and we'll see how this thing is uh, at range with a comp. All right, that's just plain scary. Bipod compensator with this gun, uh, watch out. You're gonna see a lot more snakes and a lot more people proning, I think, with the QBU on Sandhawk. That is another thing about this gun is it's only available on Sandhawk. It's scary, bro. It's real scary. Let's test this thing without any attachment on there and we will see how this thing fires. A lot more side-to-side -side action with the uh, the QBU with no attachments, but with the compensator, that is pretty much eliminated. It is so much more accurate. I'm impressed. All right, let's do a little bit of a drop test now way far back, 400 meters. Let's zoom in, and we're going to put this thing on the target. Ahead. We're at 399. We'll back up a little bit to 400. That is direct center. Let's see with a bullet drop at this range. You can see that it did fall a little bit south of that target. Really not that far though. So if we go one notch up at 400, pretty much dead center. Not much compensation at all. Look at that. That's a 400 meters with the QBU. That many shots downrange that quickly. I think we fired this bad boy enough. Let's talk a little bit about the damage now and how this compares to some of the other rifles. When comparing damage between the different DMR rifles in PUBG, we've got six main rifles to take a look at. That's the MK14, the SLR, the SKS, the QBU88, the Mini-14, and the VSS. Uh, 
actually a DMR as well. Uh, but the VSS is chambered in 9mm, making it the weakest of those DMRs. The 5.56 rifles come next, which is the Mini 14, and the QBU 88, which we're focusing on today. Then we've got the 7.62 rounds, which are the most powerful for the DMRs. You've got the MK14, the SLR, and the SKS. Now, the SKS is the weakest of the 7.62, coming in at 53 base damage. The SLR is at 58 base damage, and the MK14, which is a crate-only weapon, comes in at 61 base damage, and that is the most powerful of the DMRs in the game. But if we focus our attention on the 5.56 chambered rounds here for just a moment, the QBU-88 does do slightly more damage than the Mini-14. It does 48 base damage compared to the Mini-14's 46 base damage. The VSS is the weakest, as we mentioned, as it is chambered in 9mm, and that is 41 base damage overall for the VSS. So, the QBU-88 is a middle-of-the-road damage uh, output, but with a couple of nicely placed headshots, you might be able to just take down an enemy wearing a low-level helmet. The QBU-88 is definitely uh, up there as far as uh, you know accuracy. The whole package combined, the QBU-88 will be a favorite of a lot of players in my opinion. The QBU-88 is only available on Sandhawk, and it does replace the uh, traditional 5.56 DMR, the Mini-14. So now instead of the Mini, you will be seeing the QBU-88 everywhere all over Sandhawk. I'm actually happy for that because I love this rifle. Cannot wait to get my hands on it. We'll see if it expands to other maps here in the future. But that's been the QBU-88, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. This is Power Bank. Tune in for more PUBG Mobile action by smacking that subscribe button button and liking the video guys we'll see you in a future episode this is power bang signing out